Hey everyone, I'm Todd Embley and welcome to another edition of the Negotiation After Hours, our new video series where we speak to WPIC Marketing and Technologies co-founder and CEO Jacob Cook, recapping and diving into the latest top consumer tech business uh, stories from China and other APEC markets. Jacob joins us from the WPIC Vancouver head offices today. Jacob, welcome. Thanks, Todd. Okay, two headliners to chat with you about today. The first is that two big global consumer companies reported earnings last yeah. week, both showing strong results in China. Let's dive into those first. Well, the first company is obviously Apple. Apple had actually what's being called a very disappointing quarter globally uh, with revenue dipping 1%. Um, now, the June quarter is always weak for Apple because, you know, consumers are holding up for the new summer or the September releases for the iPhones, etc. But there's also a difficult, mm -hmm. maybe global macro environment for them. However, China stood out as a silver lining for the tech giant. You know, this trend of China being a high performing market has been evident for so many global companies in 2023. Um, you know, diving deeper into the numbers, Apple sales uh, in the greater China region, which includes the mainland Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau, uh, surged by 8% year over year. Uh, up to 15.8 billion. That, that's not just an increase. It's now record high uh, for the June quarter in the market. Uh, you know, given that China boasts really the world's most extensive internet user base for, you know, the largest smartphone market, its continuing position is one of uh, Apple's top performing regions and be surprising anybody. Uh, you know, at WPIC, our message to brands has you know, always been that China offers really unparalleled potential for driving growth. You know, Apple's recent performance, you know, is a testament to that insight. We've talked about so many other companies too. Um, this and yet there's still a lot of negative coverage about the economy, but we just continue to see the actual data points and the earnings announcements again and again and again, uh, that, that it, you know, the potential here is still massive, you know, and the second takeaway I think is that, you know, Chinese consumers obviously have a very strong appetite for foreign brands. An intriguing highlight, you know, from the earnings report was Tim Cook's observation that Chinese smartphone users are increasingly trading in from their Android devices. You know, this trend is particularly noteworthy in China, considering, you know, China's plethora of homegrown smartphone brands that use Android and Apple's position as an iconic American company. Remember, Tim Cook was received as a celebrity in China when he visited in the spring. So foreign brands that use data to understand the Chinese consumer preferences have strong products and a strong brand identity. Yeah, they can win in this market. Yeah, okay, what about the second company? Well, the second company is Adidas, and I was surprised this didn't get more media coverage because Adidas has you know, had highly publicized struggles you know, in China in the last two years. But last week, the sports giant uh, reported in Q2 earnings and China revenue was up 16% compared to flat global revenue again. Okay, so the next interesting story I want to talk to you about is the popularity of the Barbie movie uh, and how it's done in China. Have you seen the movie? I have not seen the movie, Todd. I have not seen the movie either, but let's dive into more of the data and the e-commerce and all the things that are interesting to people like you and I. Tell us about what's going on with the movie in China. Yeah, well, it's been a hit. Uh, just like in Western markets, it sparked an entire fashion trend called, called Barbie Core with bright pink clothing becoming super popular. Um, you know, first some of the data about this. Dovi itself is, is holding over 25 million at the box office so far, um, which is better than any recent American movie uh, in the last couple of years. You know, since the movie came out, Barbie related uh, searches on Tmall are up even by a thousand percent. And it's been the number one trending topic on Weibo, the social media is, you know, we're getting tens of millions of inquiries. You know, for Barbie inspired fashion posts on Xiao Hong Shu as well. Searches for pink clothes are way up. Like it, it, it's massive. Um, and you know, what's fascinating about all this too as well is that unlike the West, the Barbie doll was never really a thing here. So, you know, Alibaba's reporting Barbie doll sales being up. So this really kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but the culture's really gone from zero to hero pretty quickly. We haven't seen anything like this in, uh, in quite a while. And how long it lasts, we don't know. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of great reporting on this too. I think, um, you know, Jing Daly's had this right. You know, I've read a, just a bunch of stuff on how they've covered the culture. It's been really, really good there. Great reporting. Um, but, you know, this is totally different. Remember, they were trying to sell dolls in 2009 in Shanghai and uh, that flagship Barbie store closed in 2011. It just wasn't that popular. So the second more revamped approach has just been, been a huge, huge hit. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we, we definitely want to get more into that. 
for those of you, and it's a shameless plug here, you got to go listen to the last couple episodes of the negotiation. We talked to Crystal Tai from Jing Daily. We talked to Yao Ling Jiang from, uh, uh, you know, about what yeah. exactly happened. If we cover the Barbie house, the $30 million investment by Mattel into Shanghai. We talk about even children's toys and where's that at uh, in, in the market right now and how they grow up. A lot of very deep discussions uh, along those lines around the Barbie movie. Uh, but for today, thanks very much, Jake. That's been very fascinating. Thanks very much for joining us and for everybody listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, Todd. Bye.